pounds It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown A couple of moments, we're going to have one of the greatest Detroit Lions to ever wear the Honolulu blue and silver. Jump on here, edge rusher Robert Porsche. Any minute, we're going to talk some Detroit Lions and a fundraiser that he's doing. Absolutely love it, completely support, and I love it when I see individuals who is recognized in the communities help raise some money for individuals that need it. And this cause here, bringing heat and warmth to families here in the state of Michigan, we love that. We're going to get his opinion on Dan Campbell, his opinion on the Detroit Lions 2023 NFL season, and looking forward what he thinks from a perspective. What's great about Porsche, the guy played 13 years for the Detroit Lions at an extremely high level, multiple Pro Bowls, and he played defense. And that's what we're going to be talking about a lot because I think a lot of the question marks, let's be frank, has been on the defensive side of the football. And I cannot wait to see what he sees in Aiden Hutchinson. What does he think about the young pass rusher. What does he see in Charles Harris, Romeo Aquara, you know, you know, all the individuals, Joshua Pascal for our Detroit Lions and get his his take on this young football team, this football team whom I believe a lot of Lions fans believe is going to be a good football team this year. Win the NFC North and bring back, bring back the pride to the great team that is the Detroit Lions. The, the fan base been waiting and waiting and waiting to have a team that can kick butt. And that's exactly what I cannot wait to hear from one of the greatest of all time to say. It. And here he is, one of the greatest players to ever don a uniform. Robert Porsche, edge rusher, 95 and a half sacks. How are you doing, good sir? Good, man. How you doing? Outstanding. Outstanding. Awesome. awesome. I want to talk about, before we get into football, one of the greatest things that you're doing here, and that's kicking off and, and raising money for heat in the state of Michigan. Folks, Robert Porsche yeah. doing a Lions watch party. Win opening game on Thursday, start at 6.30 p.m. There's going to be a way that you come in, you can get VIP reception, and if you donate from $50 to $5,000, it brings money to those individuals that really need it when it gets cold in the state of Michigan. I know it's warm now, but it will get cold. And the live watch party. Folks, you can be there. All you got to do is go to Thaw Member Board Robert Porsche at the Shadow Gallery, 1533 Winter Street, Detroit, Michigan, in Detroit. First off, I think that's amazing. How did you get involved in a fundraiser like this? Well, first off, thanks for having me on. And I apologize for being a few minutes tardy. It's been a busy, busy day down here in, uh, in South Carolina. I, um, I got involved with Thaw when I was actually still playing um, with the Lions, and I was on their board of directors. And I, I just love their mission statement, what they stood for, what they did for you know, people in need and elderly people. And as you said, it's warm now, but of course, everybody um, understands if you're a Michiganian, you understand how cold and frigid those winters can be. And, and Thaw is in place to help folks who need assistance with, you know, energy needs. Um, because sometimes people just run into tough times and, you know, we all need help. So I, I was involved in it when I played. Then after I retired, I, I, I got off the board because I wanted to really just kind of focus on my own children and making sure they were 
okay and had me as much as possible. And now they're all adults. My youngest just graduated from um, college. So I, um, you know, I'm just a community person. I like giving back and I'm, I'm back again involved with all. I'm a board member again. And uh, I thought this would just be a great opportunity just to bring awareness to what we are all about at Thaw, but also kind of bridge it with the other thing that's very important to me and a lot of people in Michigan, which is the Detroit Lions. And what better way to kick off the season? I think this is great um, opportunity for our young team to play the Super Bowl champion, um, Kansas City Chiefs, and just really get to a feel of being in a big game. And it is a big game because it is the first uh, game of the season. Uh, I'm quite sure the Chiefs will have there'll be some kind of celebration there about them winning the Super Bowl um, earlier this year. And I think that would just be great for the young players to be in that uh, space and observe that and experience it. And, you know, back in Detroit, you know, the, the Lions fans are all geeked up about the season. I just thought it'd be great to have some of the former players there and, of course, myself and watch the game with people and give folks a chance to um, – ask questions and interact with us. And, you know, the money that is raised that night is all tax deductible. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. It's absolutely a win-win. You get to watch the game, hang out with some Lions greats, and, and do it for a good cause. You know, that's yes. what it's all about. It's about giving back. And there's some un unfortunates. And if you can always help just a little bit, Man, that's just absolutely amazing. So I appreciate you doing that. And I absolutely love the idea of, of helping out the less, you know, individuals that need it more than others. Talk about the Detroit Lions. So you've been watching this team, obviously. You've been playing for this team for a long time. What do you think of Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes, this regime completely different from, I think, anything that we've experienced in so many, so many years? I think you just hit the nail on the head. Um, it definitely starts with you know leadership um, up front and the ownership also. Um, it's been a while. It's been a very long, long time since you know the team has been relevant. I, I, I live down south. I'm in I'm in Michigan all the time, but of course I, you know I'm from born and raised in South Carolina. That's where I live now. And uh, for years, you know, people. I would be wearing, you know, my Lions gear and, you know, folks would be like, are you serious? Like, you're like really wearing that? And I'm just like, it's my team. And they just like, well, how? I was like, what do you mean how? <laughs> and, uh, and, they, and they was just, when I would tell them, because some, you know, some folks didn't, don't know that I played, but then they'd be like, well, why are you, why is it still your team? And I was just like, well, we're just, we're in transition. We're, we're in a serious rebuild. This, but I, I was saying that for like, <laughs> Seven, eight years, man. It was a long time, but it feels good now to um, uh, know that, you know, we're definitely trending in the right direction. I think um, Brad Holmes is, 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 is just a brilliant young scouting mind. Um, he's been drafting really well and he has a good staff there with um, scouts, which of course, you know, those guys have to get out and you know, see the players and write the reports and get get everything compiled. Um, and I think um, Dan Campbell is just a great guy. I remember when Dan was playing with the Lions. I was already retired, but, you know, just seeing him in the locker room. And, uh, you know, he was one of those guys who, when he was done, of course, went right into coaching. And he's learned under some pretty good coaches. So I think he's the right person for this job right now and where the team is and where the team needs to go. And I wish them the most success. One thing, one thing I really do admire is the number of former players that are coaching on the staff. I think it's something to be said for that because, you know, as a former player, when you're around players, guys can't just, pull things over on you, you know, because you understand everything that they're going through. I mean, I've been retired now almost, what, 18 years now? And um, I can still run through the whole schedule. I can tell you just about from start from the time they get in till the time they're done, what they're doing and how that works during the course of the day. So when you have players coming in, right, 
young guys and they're talking or they're trying to buck the system and not do what is needed. I think when you have former coaches, number one, they understand that they understand the players and then they're just there to really kind of help them navigate that because sometimes it's not easy when you're coming in and the transition from college to the NFL and then just some of the responsibilities that some of these young men, the burdens they have with families and other responsibilities. I think it's good to have people in those meeting rooms who've been there, who have experienced it and who understand what they're going through. So I think, I think, I think we're on the right track. The negative Absolutely. though oh, the yeah, negative go ahead. is we're still a young team. Right. We're a young team. Now we have some pieces in place um, that are, are, are off to a great start. Uh, you know, uh, Penny Sewell is, is, is definitely coming into his own. Um, Aiden is definitely hit the ground running from day one. You know, we got some other younger players there, but it takes time for those guys to gel together. I was telling somebody, I, I did an interview a couple of days ago, and I was saying how where we drafted Luther Ellis, who played, we played next to each other. I was already in my fifth season when he came in. It was year seven for me before we really began to gel where I just instinctively knew where he would be and how he would flow. Well, when you got two first year players or you got a first year player, you got a second year player with a first year player, it will take time for them to really understand the game, get get to know the game, and really gel and understand how the person next to them is going to flow. So I, I think we're on the right track. I I am hopeful that we can really um, win the division or 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 maybe be second in the division. Um, but I think. Over the next two to three seasons, if, if Brad and his team continue to draft the way they're doing and then bring in free agencies and Dan and his staff continue to develop the players that are there, I don't see any reason why two, three years from now we won't be um, a serious, serious Super Bowl contender. Not that we can't be this year, but I'm just saying it takes time to gel and get yep. all the pieces in place. That's all. We are here with one of the greatest Detroit Lions ever, Robert Porsche, and he's doing a watch party, and uh, the money that is donated there is going to go to help out the fund, and you can find that out in the description and the comment section right now. I got a pinned comment. I got it in the description. Easy click. Hyperlink right to it. Shadow Gallery, 1553 Winter Street, Eastern Market to benefit the Heat Warm Fund. 6.30 to 7.30 is where you get the VIP. You can donate some money. And then the 7.30 p.m., the live watch party with him and other Lions greats. you got to go there. I'm yeah. sure it will be a blast. One of the biggest games for the Detroit Lions in recent memory. And you are talking about this just earlier. Lions, Kansas City Chiefs, Super Bowl champions. The NFL is trust in Detroit right now to be yes. able to open the season up. And what do you think that means for Dan Campbell and Spielman, who's up in there as well, and the players? Do you, do they have the pressure? Or do you think that they can they can take the pressure and really you know take it to Kansas City? I think that from a player standpoint, you know, you you got a, you got a young team, so I don't know if they really feel that that pressure because you know they're young guys and they're trying to prove themselves. I think um, Coach Campbell definitely understands the magnitude of this game, but again, it's it's the first game. Yeah, it's important, but it's not the end of the world if it's not. If, if, if things don't go the way they want. But whenever you're picked by the NFL to participate, of course, if you win the Super Bowl, then, you know, you know you're going to open the season. But I think it says a lot about how our team finished last season and what the expectations are for them that they have been picked to open this game up. I think I think it's just a great opportunity. And you know what? I think we deserve it. Because we, we've been at the bottom of the barrel for so many years, man. I think I think we deserve it, and I am just hopeful that you know the guys will not sh only show up, but show up and show out and come back with a victory. It definitely sets it sets the stage 
um, if we came out there with a victory? Because it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. You know, Lions mm -hmm. nearly beat the Philadelphia Eagles last year, who was at the Super Bowl. They went head to toe with the Seattle Seahawks and they beat the Giants. Now, it's not Kansas City, but it shows you that they do have talent. And hey, look, if you have talent and you have a coaching staff, anything is possible any given Sunday. A couple players I want to talk to you about, a little bit of controversial in the Detroit area. What do you think about Lions quarterback Jared Goff and what he has brought to Detroit, him as a quarterback? and what he brings to this team. Maybe that other quarterbacks like Stafford didn't, or is it just him himself? Is it the players all around him? What do you think about Goff? He's a veteran. Um, he understands the game. Um, you know, he's been around for quite a few years. I think this is what, is maybe his seventh, sixth, seventh season? Seventh, in NFL? yeah, seventh or eighth, yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah so he's been around. He, he, he came from a very good organization with the Rams, so – um, I definitely think he has all that is needed in that position to help us be successful. Hopefully he can stay healthy and hopefully we can get our receivers back and 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 get keep everybody. The key is gonna be how healthy are they early on, of course, but then in December. That is gonna be the key. And do they pick right back up from where they left off last season? or is there some kind of lull? Um, I just personally don't think, you know, we have enough veterans, an older team where we can start um, in a lull and then pick it up in December. I just don't, I, that's just my opinion, but I'm not there every day. So I think Jared uh, Goff can lead this team and I'm hopeful that he can, and if not, Something happens, then we have a, an experienced backup in Teddy Bridgewater, and uh, we'll just keep going. You talked about wide receivers, and obviously, we got to talk about Jamison Williams. What do you think about his tenure so far as a Detroit Lion? Do you think that he has high potential for this team when he comes back from suspension? That him and Jared Goff eventually can get on the same page and, and really, you know, stretch the defense? Well, he definitely can stretch the defense, he, he's definitely a speedster. Um, I think it's just unfortunate, eh, just, you know, just being young and I don't want to say dumb, but that, you know, to get suspended for something as silly as that just to me, doesn't make sense. Um, hopefully he learns from that and, you know, he can get back out and, and really contribute. But when he came back last season, you know, towards the end of the season, I liked what I saw. So there's no reason that I can see that he should not be able to when he comes back, just contribute. But I'm, I'm quite sure he's going to be hungry and ready to play because of the fact that, you know, maybe he didn't think he should have gotten suspended and he'll have a chip on his shoulder. And the fact that he's now in year two, not starting the season, came in year one and didn't play that much. So I'm hopeful he will be hungry and I'm hopeful that he will stay healthy when he does come back and really do what we all have seen flashes of, which is, be a speedster up the sideline. He has great hands. Mm -hmm. It's obviously he can't. It's obvious he can play, but you know we just got to see more of it. Let's go back to defense. I love defense. I love pass rush. We talk about all the time on here. Me too. I love that. Too. Uh, it's just the greatest, right? Just just smacking the quarterback. Oh, and we got a young guy, Nathan Hutchinson. <sighs> he looked really good last year. You know, rookie season. And then James Houston, who who come in and pass rush. What do you think about these young players that we got in Aiden and, and Houston and Joshua Pascal? What they bring to this team, you know, going forward, not just this year, but for many years. Right. I I like their youth. I like their motors. I like when I say motor, you know, they're just very active. They move around really good. Um, they seem to play together really well, which is also important. And I think if they can stay healthy, um, you know, we have the making of a pretty good defensive line. And again, as I said earlier, it takes time for guys to play together in jail. You know, Tracy Scroggins and I um, were two ends with Detroit for many years. We, we were both in the class of 92. Tracy started playing on a full-time basis before I did, right? But as the years went on and we played and then you brought in, you know, a guy like Luther and then you kind of just really kind of interchanged the other 
uh, tackle or nose guard. I think it's important that you have two, three guys that really have a feel for each other and grow together so they can have some continuity. And um, I think it just helps the whole defense. And then you, if you plug in young, hungry, aggressive linebackers, then you got, you got, I think you got the making of a very good, strong front seven, which is very important in the NFL. So I'm hopeful that, you know, those guys will continue to play the way they're playing and keep progressing. Um, but also hopeful that they can stay healthy because the key is staying healthy because that's what usually ends the careers of so many players is injuries. And it's well, a lot of contact in the line. A lot of contact. A lot of contact. You know, like Romeo Aquari has been injured, but I mean, he's, he takes a lot of contact on there. How do you deal with injury? You know, you 13 years in the NFL, years in college, then obviously high school. You know, what do you do to maintain that? Are you, do you sore a lot or what? Well, you're definitely sore. Uh, I think, well, for me, it was, a lot of it was just, the, you know, the stretching. And as I got older in my career, then I got introduced to yoga. And I, I really feel that prolonged my career for at least two, three more seasons because of, you know, just the – uh, being really flexible. But yeah, it's very important that you take care of your body. Um, you definitely have to hydrate. You have to be stretched out all the time. And, you know, I, I, so many of the players now, you know, have a full time, literally like staff of people working around the clock to make sure that, you know, they are able to play on Sunday. You know, like I've, I've been told Russell Wilson has a chef that travels with him everywhere, like a masseuse that goes with him. And, you know, as you get older, you, you need all of those things, man. So, um, yeah, I think if the guys are doing that, taking care of their body and, and they're lucky where they don't have any career ending injuries, then, you know, yeah, they, they'll definitely have some longevity in this in this league. But it's not easy, man. It is not easy. Yeah. And, you know, when Calvin Johnson retired due to the injuries, I was not mad at all. I can't even imagine the amount of hits he took being so big and such a contact. And the yeah. body can only take so much. It doesn't matter how much money you make. Your body still hurts. It doesn't, you know, it just doesn't go away. Got a great question here from a, a subscriber. Robert, what is your favorite memory as a Detroit Lion? Oh, my favorite memory? Uh, I would have to... That's good. That's a good question. I have a, a lot of them. One that always stands out because, of course, it was my rookie year. We played the – back then they were the Washington Redskins in 92 in RFK Stadium. Um, it was, I think, like the third game of the season. And um, it was nationally televised. So we played – yeah, we played them. And Pat Summerall and John Madden did the game. And I remember because I was such a – Redskins fan growing up in South Carolina back then you didn't have the Panthers so either you either you were Washington or for Washington or you were for the Atlanta Falcons and I just was always a, a Washington guy so coming out on the field for the pregame and seeing Charles Mann who was one of my idols defensive end there on the other side of the on on the other sideline I was just like God if I'm dreaming please just let me finish this game before you wake me up because this is a dream come true to look over and see the hog section, you know, the hogs. And I'd seen that stadium so many times as a kid and just to actually be playing in it. And I actually got, had a really good game that game that day. And I recorded my first NFL sack that game. So. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right in a stadium you'd love to be in, and it's a memory that will never go away. Never go away. See yep. here that your trucking company is transporting SCSU football equipment this season. I seen yeah. the Instagram video. Thought it was really cool. I pinned yeah. it in there for people to watch. Talk about that, you know, and, and bringing equipment and helping these young fellows out. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, yesterday, um, that was one of the reasons why I was a little – Late today, we um, I've just been scrambling all week just to make sure that everything was in place. So, yeah, I started uh, PM Logistics Services like 10 years ago. And um, last year I was at one of the games and I was talking to our AD 
And I was like, I think I could really help you guys out a little bit more with which, you know, I just needed to understand how they were traveling. And um, we were able to get it worked out and we unveiled the new uh, football equipment trailer yesterday at a press conference on campus. And uh, they've named the tra trailer Diesel, which I, I love that name. It was a great name. Um, it's a 53 foot swing door um, uh, air ride trailer for folks who know the business. And, uh, you know, uh, one of my drivers and, and one of our tractors will be transporting equipment for the season to all of the away games. And um, I'm just always excited anytime I have the opportunity not to only just give back money to the school, but help help however I can. And like I, like I said yesterday when I was speaking um, at the press conference, a big motivation for me is you never know who's watching you because uh, Donnie Shell is on the trailer. We have four NFL Hall of Famers from South Carolina State. We're the only university in the state of South Carolina that has more than one NFL Hall of Famer. University of South Carolina doesn't have any. Clemson just got their first in 2018. Coastal Carolina and Wofford and some of the other schools, they don't have any. And I think it's something that I'm definitely proud of. Um, I think it's something our university is proud of. And I think it's something that needs to be showcased. Um, and I just, I, I, I really, yesterday I was speaking, I mean, of course I know Donnie Shell and Harry Carson, those guys. I met Deacon Jones years ago when I was young. Um, but I know Harry and Donnie, you know, personally. But I remember being a senior and it became kind of apparent that I was going to get drafted and how those guys would come back to campus and, you know, were around me and spoke to me about how I need to conduct myself, what that meant to go to the NFL and just the legacy there. So for me, this is another opportunity for me to show those young players that are there who aspire to play in, in the NFL, who inspire, inspire to be business owners you know, how you do it and then what you do when you are successful. So I was very, I was very excited about that yesterday, just seeing their faces. That's and awesome. um, I was happy that we could help Coach Pugh because um, our coach who actually announced today that this will be his last season, he'll be retiring at the end of the season. But he and I were together at an event earlier in May and I was told, I told him how I was speaking talking to our athletic director about get, trying to get this worked out. And he was just telling me what I, what it would mean for them. And uh, I'm just happy that I, I was able to help. I'm always, I'm always willing to help them. That's awesome, man. Always yeah. helping out these youngsters. And that's just a great thing. And that that's yeah. what, you know, this, this is all about, right? We I agree. help each other out and, and just continue to grow as a society. Question here from AJ Pressure. Questions for Robert. Who was the best opponents that you have faced? Um, from an offensive tackle standpoint, I would have to say James Big Cat Williams from Chicago and uh, Earl Dotson from Green Bay. Um, and both of those guys are right tackles. And, and of course, they gave me the most fits because they knew me better than anybody because we would play against them you know, two times every year. Um, so it was always just a matter of who would blink first or who would make a mistake first, whether or not, you know, I would have a game, a good game or vice versa. So those guys, I would have to say those two guys. And then Brett Favre, I played during the Brett Favre era. And, um, I mean, he was such a gunslinger, man. Oh <laughs> yeah, he definitely was. He, he was, he was a, he was a tough, tough person to play against, but the thing about Brett that I, I, I always think about, too, um, now, if the Packers are beating us in between plays, he wants to he wants to talk. He'll be like, hey, Robert, how you doing? How's the family? But if we're beating them, I'd be like, Brett, what's up? He just walked by. I was like, man, you're not going to talk? You're not going to speak? <laughs> if they're not winning, he's not going to speak. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. He yeah. can dish it out, but he can't take it, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. We're here with one of the greatest Detroit Lions ever, Robert Porsche, and he's got a great thing going on here for the opening game Lions at Kansas City. 
kickoff for heat with robert porsche lions watch party it is over there at thaw board member robert porsche at shadow gallery and that's 1533 winder street in detroit michigan if you get there at 6 30 if you donate maybe 50 bucks or even a little bit more that money goes to helping michiganders with heat and other causes and if you're not you can be there with him with the watch party 7 30 p.m watching the lions hopefully hopefully defeat the Kansas City Chiefs, because that would just be amazing if Absolutely. that occurred. Now, if the Lions go and beat the Kansas City Chiefs, what do you think the headlines would be in the media? Would the, would that change things a little bit in Detroit? Does it just turn it up a notch? I think it would turn it up 10 notches, and it should, <laughs> because um, that I, I think it's possible. I, th I do think it can happen. Um, that would just really set the stage, man, for that, okay, this team is for real. However, <laughs> if it doesn't happen, people, it's one game, okay? It's one game. We just need to win all the home games and win three, four of them on the road, and then we're, we're, you're, you're in the playoffs. So we, that's, that's the key, to try to get home field advantage and play, win a division, and play at home during the playoffs. But I, 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 I'm I, excited about it. I think it's a great opportunity. And um, I want folks to come out and, and enjoy the game with us and as opposed to just sitting at a bar. Yeah. Why not come there with us and, you know, your, your donation to buy your ticket to get in is tax deductible. You can write that off. And then we're going to have hors d'oeuvres. And we will have plenty of drinks there, too and lots of TVs. And you'll have former players there too that you can interact with. Be a silent auction. It's gonna be a fun night. We got a lot of good things going on. The plate, the location is beautiful and uh, spacious and it's, it's just gonna be a fun night. Again, all that information is in the comment section. It is in the description, the links. Real easy to get to. All you got to do is click it and you're good to go. What do you think about Lions 18th pick, Jack Campbell? Linebacker here, you know, the first when the NFL draft, all the analysts, the Mel Kuypers and the Todd McShays, they kind of poo pooed the idea of getting a linebacker at 18. But now you see what he's doing here in Detroit. It's all you hear is good. You know, this guy is fast. He's decisive. He hits the hole. He is a player that can really make this defense much improved. But from your perspective, what do you see from him as a rookie and potentially, you know, years down the road for Detroit? Well, here's the thing about draft analysts, and I like those guys. I think those guys that Mel Kuyper has been around since. And I don't know, whatever Mel has going on is working because Mel doesn't look like he's aged since I came out. He still looks the same. Um, and those guys do a great job. But here's the difference between a draft analyst, right, and a scouting department. Um, in a scouting department, you're going to have a lot of eyes on – one player well on multiple players so by the time they get their reports in when they're making their picks right they've already done all their due diligence they've 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 went over this guy lots of people have seen it gotten their eyes on him and most times not all times but most times they're fairly right so i think i will go along with our scouting department especially given Brad Holmes and his group and how they've been drafting of late, as opposed to, you know, what the uh, draft analysts on ESPN is saying. So he's a young player, man, and he's hungry. He, he wants to do well, and he's doing everything in his power to position himself to get on the field. Everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to do well when they get to the NFL. So I'm hopeful he will just continue to grow and get better. Now, the regular season is definitely a lot different than, of course, the preseason, but mm -hmm. he is checking off all the boxes early, so hopefully he can stay healthy and then just continue to grow and contribute, and that's what you got to do. You have to you have to build depth at each yeah. position. That's very important because you're going to have injuries. You just hope, you're just hopeful mother, mother injury doesn't visit too often to your team. Yeah, <laughs> we've time, had that a couple is, times. She is going to rear her ugly heads up at some point. 
What do you think about the preseason versus the regular season? Is it really that important? You know, there's always debates. Should starters play? Shouldn't they play? You know, veterans has been doing it for a long time. Is there really that much of a difference if a veteran plays or not? No, it is not. I think um, it's definitely important when, for younger players or players that are kind of on the cup of, you know, becoming a good player or, you know, somebody you got to take a look at to see whether or not they can be a, a, a role player. I think when you're kind of proving yourself and you know you're that player is a part of your starting lineup um, and, and is going to contribute in a big way, there's no real reason to spend a lot of time out there because you run the risk of getting hurt. I was flipping the channels the other night and I saw where Patrick Mahone, I think it might have been their first preseason game, but I was shocked that he was actually out there. I mean, he just had like one series down the field, but I was still shocked that he he was on the field. I just would think they wouldn't wouldn't do it. Kind of like how Wayne Fonts used to do with Barry Sanders. Like, you know, Barry never played in the preseason. <laughs> just that would just be like unheard of that, you know, because when Wayne would Wayne Fonts would, you know, read out the scouting report, you know, he would just say, when he go by the position of who's, you know, playing, he would get to Barry and he's like, Barry, you 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 on um Gatorade, just make sure everybody has the Gatorade when they come off the field. <laughs> He's the water boy, the Gator boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so no, man. I'm not a big, I'm not a big proponent of um, um, veterans playing a lot. I hated playing in the preseason. I really did. Maybe the Is first big, game, it, just because yeah. you know you're back. But I, I just I didn't like it. I just Is it also because the season. NFL season's really long? You know, you're you're doing real games at that point, 16, but now it's 17. So why do extra reps in a game that doesn't mean anything? Is that a part of it as well? Well, that was for me, yes. Yeah, it was just, I mean, by the time I got to year six, seven, I knew what I needed to do to be ready for opening day. I just, I didn't want to run the risk. I didn't like running the risk of getting hurt. So I just wanted to make it look good, but you know, a lot of veterans just out there just trying to make it look good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember yeah. one game we were playing preseason game. We were playing um, the Ravens in Baltimore in Orlando Brown uh, before he passed. Of course, he was one of my teammates at South Carolina state and he was their right offensive tackle. And um, when we came out of the, you know, when the game started, you know, the first series, he was just like, I've been waiting on this for a long time. And I was like, waiting on what? He's like, to get after you. I was like, what are you talking about? So we're getting down in our stands. I was like, because we called him Zeus. I was like, Zeus, I'm running up the field. I got three plays. Do not touch me. And I just ran up the field. The <laughs> next play, they ran away. And I ran down. He was trying to block my wouldn't let him touch me. Then the third play, I just ran up the field again. And that was it. I was off. But, you know, some guys, uh, you know, some guys, Really take it seriously. I was not one of those guys. Yeah, you turn it on when the regular season happens. Exactly, save the body. Yes. Save the when body. The stat books open. Yeah, when it really matters. You know, ninety-five yeah. <laughs> and a half sacks. I think you, you know, people can't debate that. That's a lot yeah. of sacks. Yeah, that's yeah. getting it done for the Detroit Lions during your uh, tenure here. One of the great Detroit Lions. I I was watching the draft. I just couldn't believe Brian Branch fell the second round. I love what I saw from him in college. He falls to the Lions in the second round, and he's just been blowing up camp. I mean, you've seen it in preseason, the hit that he does. You know, what do you see from the secondary, young secondary? Kirby Joseph, absolutely outstanding in college, pick machine, comes to Detroit, pick machine. Then you get C.J. Gardner-Johnson, you get Cam Sutton, Emmanuel Mosley. It was a weakness last year. What do you see from the Lions secondary mm -hmm. revamped? Well, you, first, you have some young players who are hungry and want to prove themselves and who, you know, want to be a name, want to be a face of the defense. You know, Aiden Hutchinson gets a lot of credit, which is deserved. But, you know, when you're on a team and you play on a defense, you know, you want folks to talk about you, too, like, like they talk about him. Um, so you got a lot of guys who want to prove themselves and they just want to they just want to compete. They want to play. Um, 
they have a coach that has a swagger about them. Dre Blige, of course, was one of my teammates, yeah. Lions, and he he plays the game at a certain he played the game at a certain level, and you know he's coaching those guys a, a certain way with the play with a swagger, play hungry, play wanting to win. So I I think as this group um, just kind of builds cohesiveness, they will definitely hopefully if they can stay injury free be you know that back end support that the guys up front really need because it's definitely a team effort you know you 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 need your corners and your safeties to cause that quarterback to have to go to his second or possibly third read which if the defensive line is playing the way they should somebody should be able to break free and get there and get a quarterback knocked down bat a ball or even get a sack when I look at, you know, when you played, I feel like the rules kind of softened a little bit against the defense, especially defensive linemen, and in protecting the quarterback. What do you what do you think about that? You know, your your time, you know, smashing the quarterback and now it's kind of a little protecting. Do you think it's a disadvantage for the defense? Do you think it's good for the NFL all around? Well, I think it's, it's definitely for the def, the, for, for the defender, they don't like it, which I understand. But it's, it's, I think it's better overall for the game. You know, you, you, you know, some of the things we were able to do back then, man, like the just, you know, hitting the guys in the knees, man. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which was allowed. I tried not to do it, but a couple of times, you know, you just left your feet and it just happened. But I never tried to intentionally do that, but I know guys who was just like, no, I'm, I'm aiming for the knees. I'm trying to take them out. And that just wasn't my thing. So I, I am, you know, for just the growth of the game, you know, if you don't have Patrick Mahomes out there playing, will people still come to the games? Of course, but more folks will be coming if he is actually on the field as opposed to him on the sideline because somebody hit him in his knees. 100%. I mean, they're the face, right? Patrick Mahomes out there, State Farm with Aaron Rodgers. And... <laughs> <laughs> Those commercials oh. suck. Patrick Mahomes is horrible in the commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the new one, I, him and his backup. Uh, that was like, hey, good job, guys. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at the Detroit Lions this season, you know, the hype is blown up. Everybody's talking about the Lions, but they got to get it done on the field. Yes. What is your record prediction, realistic record prediction for the Detroit? I know I'll put you on the spot. It's a bad question. I think, think they can be 10 and 6. 10 and 6 or 10 and 7. 17 now. Oh, 17. Oh, my God. 10 and 7. Yeah. <laughs> so that's right there. I mean, that's a playoff spot for sure. It may win the NFC North. It may not, but that's a playoff spot. Ten wins, you get you in the playoffs. Do you yeah, think absolutely. they? Do you think they win the North, or is it a wild card? You think? I think we'll we'll need to pay more. Pay well. I think we'll have to pay. Really be prepared when we play Minnesota. I think Minnesota will be a lot better than. A lot of people are maybe giving them credit for right now. And they started on fire last year and just kind of fizzled out a little bit. But most of those players are back and they understand they have players, a lot of key positions that's just been playing together a little bit longer than we have our guys. And I think um, if they can stay healthy, they're going to be somebody who we're going to have to definitely contend with. Green Bay is always going to be Green Bay, but yeah, I think they're going to be kind of down a little just because Aaron has just been there for such a long time, and you know they're going to be adjusting to not having him, and um, I think that'll take a little bit of time. But yeah, I, I, I just I think Minnesota right now. So you you dealt with Brett Favre, you know Bart Starr, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers. Do you think Jordan Love could? Be another one of these quarterbacks that terrorize us for the next 20 years. I think he can. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely has the ability. I mean, if you think about it, Aaron Rodgers sat for about what, four, five seasons, too. He didn't play for the first four years. Mm -hmm. um, just like, 
he he yeah Aaron didn't play for his like first I think four years because Brett wouldn't retire and he wouldn't leave you know so but this is his first season so I, I'm I'm not really too concerned about uh uh Jordan Love um I think Minnesota you just definitely got to keep an eye on on them yeah, for up. sure, for sure. I think yeah. They're, yeah, they're probably the toughest toughest competition. Then you got the Chicago Bears with a mobile dual threat quarterback and Justin Fields. You know how how can the Lions defense kind of slow this down? I feel like it's our our weakest link is the mobile quarterback. If you look last year, Justin Fields ran all over us. Yeah, Jalen Hurts ran all over us. What can the Lions do in Aaron Glenn in this defense to slow these type of quarterbacks down? Um, just a lot of pursuing. The guy's going to have to pursue to the ball and not look or not think that somebody else will make the tackle. Um, yeah, I, I, I think Chicago – I mean, Chicago's not a slouch, slouchy team or anything. But, again, I, I just look at the cohesiveness. I just yeah. think we're – when you look at the teams in our division right now, Green Bay's going to definitely be going through a, 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 a transition. Chicago second year quarterback still trying to figure it out what they're doing. They they got to try to establish who their what their identity is. You know, our our coaches in place, we have key players in key positions in place. So I think we're ahead of those two teams just because of that. And then Minnesota, like I said, I think it's just a team we have to really keep an eye on. And I would really like to see I, I'm, I'm curious I'm gonna be curious to see how our offensive line plays together. you know this preseason so far I haven't watched both games every play. I mean every play of both games preseason games but uh, you know I don't know our offensive line you know as, as a group I think yeah. they're gonna to have to play better together than they have been. Yeah, the backup offensive line has not looked that great, but our starters are really good. You I mean you got a dominant offensive line with Panay Sewell, Taylor Decker, Frank Ragnow, Jonah Jackson, and Halapluti Vati Vaitai. What is the difficulties? You played the edge at an extremely high level going against an offensive line that's really stout. You know, what do teams have to do to to, to beat that? Because we got one of the best, I feel like, at least starting. Yeah, but I'm talking more so of what if one or two of those guys get down, those down like down. yeah, big V. Then we're yeah. what, what kind of depth do we mm -hmm. have? I think you know that is a question. But again, the coaches, scouting department, whatever it is we're talking about, they 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 see it too, and you know they're looking at what they're going to do. Whether that means trading players to get you know guys in that can help or you know, just searching some of the waiver wires. Some young guys, they might have had an eye on it, went somewhere else. If they're available, can we bring them in and they'd be a better fit in our system? So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, but those are just things that have jumped out at me. One of those players you talk about trade, and we've been hearing rumors all week eh, for a couple of weeks now, is Julian Aquara. You know, what do you make of him? Should the Lions look to trade him? Should they keep him? Young guy. Like, what do you see from this young player? I'm not, I'm not familiar with who that is. I'm sorry. That is okay. That is okay. We're here with Robert Porsche. He's doing a live watch party. You all need to go. It's the Shadow Gallery at 1553 Winter Street and Eastern Market to benefit the heat and warmth fund. If you get yes. there at 6:30 to 7:30, VIP tickets, and it's gives money to help out the less fortunate when it got, does get cold in the state of Michigan. So please do that. And the watch party with him and other Lions greats at 730 until the game is over. And if you want a fun time, yeah, you can drink at a bar. Yeah, that's cool, right? But how about you know, drink with Lions greats, with multiple TVs, having a blast on opening game, make sure you guys show up at the Shadow Gallery in Detroit. Ah, that that's gonna be a blast. It's gonna be yeah, it'll be a fun time. Definitely be a fun time. Thank you so much. We're, we're looking forward to it, man. And hopefully the team does well and don't have any injuries um, with the game tomorrow in Charlotte. And then get ready, get ready for Thursday night, man. That's a big, big game. 
Final question, then we'll, we'll get off here. Prediction for the Lions versus Kansas City. Two weeks away. Who wins and why? <laughs> <laughs> I think the Lions win because Woo! in the fourth quarter, Patrick Mahomes threw, forces a pass trying to showboat a little bit, and we intercept it and run it all the way back. Oh, my yeah. God, that would be glorious. That would be a great way to, to start the NFL season. Rob Porche, it was a blast to have you on the show. Thank you, man, for having me. Yeah, absolutely awesome. Love the foundation. Love what you've done for the city of Detroit and an SC and being a Detroit Lion and giving back to the community. Absolutely outstanding. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate the time. And thanks to you folks who've been listening and the questions that have been asked. I appreciate you guys. And Hopefully we see you guys on the seven. Absolutely. Better be there over there with Robert Porsche game night. With that said, folks, adios. Hey. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me. And what was left over, I put towards my dreaming. But the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for, believe me. Take into your hands a plan, your own hands can land your own brand. And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability. They want the credibility, convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours it takes to get some power. Don't be f***ing sour, take a cold shower, scream until you're louder, work until you're prouder. And f all the doubters, they're just your downers. I swear to God, they all let me down. I always fought just to wear the crown. I'm off at these f***ing clowns Who were all taught they deserve an ounce It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown